Yeah! Woo! My girlfriend is pregnant, everybody. Give it up, Rob. We're super excited. This is our first one together. Together, we're gonna do this. We've been, will we've been willing ourselves to do this, man. And next week, I'm gonna drop her off at the clinic. She's gonna get cleaned out, and then I'm gonna pick her up afterwards. <laughs> Fuck Justin Trudeau. Like, if it wasn't for him, man, I'd be able to wear plastic bags over top of my socks during puddle season. But no, he has to fucking ban the plastic bags. Way to go, Justin Trudeau. Fuck you, buddy. And as for potholes, I fucking hate these potholes, ladies and gentlemen. I can't wait for the city to actually clean this shit up. Then that way I can do this without busting a tire. I busted a tire on the way here. And guess what? My unicycle has to go to the shop for a couple of days now. Oh, snap. So, well, it looks like there's a lot of nice people here tonight. It's date night, Saturday night. I'm here with my date. She's great. She's smart. She's a sweetheart. And she's my girlfriend's best friend. Give it up for her. Yeah. Yeah. I recently got out of a relationship with a woman with an eating disorder that makes her fat. But now I'm in a relationship with a woman with an eating disorder that makes her skinny. So, whenever we go out to eat, who do you think gets to finish the leftovers? This guy. Oh! So, Jesus Christ was crucified, and then three days later, he came back from the dead. And now, whenever I'm with my three-year-old daughter, I love to play peekaboo Jesus whenever we play the game, because he has holes in his hands, like, there she is, there she is, there she is. She loves it. <laughs> Once, I was boarding a flight, but they wouldn't let me on the plane, because they told me that I'm the bomb. So, I said, fuck it, and I walked to Montreal. I went to Montreal because, you know, the selling of sex in Canada is legal, but the purchasing of sex in Canada is illegal. Except for when you're in Montreal. They look the other way or they ask you if they can join in. <laughs> How's everybody doing tonight, though? A lot of people having a good time? I fucking hope so. This is a great tavern, especially since the women working here are hot. And that's how every guy judges a restaurant or a tavern. Like, every Yelp review is just how we see women. Winnipeg Red Lobster. The ambiance was distracting. The food was undercooked and cold. But the waitress was hot and she went home with me. Five stars, yeah! Montana's. The food was excellent. The ambiance was refreshing. But the waitress wouldn't even look at me. One star. <laughs> I love the restaurant biz, ladies and gentlemen. I used to work at a restaurant when I was hired on as a dishwasher. And there's nobody there, like, telling a prophecy. There's no prophet being like, this is the guy who will change how we wash dishes forever. There's none of that in real life. It's a job. You're just supposed to take it seriously. But I had a funny boss. And that was the cool part about it. He'd always tell me that I'll become a big boss. He'd say, things like you put on apron, you wash dishes, and you become big boss. Here, you take the mop, you mop the floor, you become big boss. Here, you suck cock, I make you chef, and you become big boss. And that's how I became a chef. It was pretty awesome, guys. Pretty awesome. Had a good day. <laughs> God created the world in six days. And then on the seventh day, I told him to rest, but he didn't listen, so I choked him out with Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and he still hasn't woken up. Tap out or pass out, God. <laughs> so for me, when it comes to religion, it's a lot like wearing a condom. If my girlfriend wants me to do it, I'll do it. But I'm not going to feel anything with a condom on. <laughs> I used to work with a woman who was trying to gain weight. Like, I would see her with a poutine, and I'd be like, you know, that's going to pack on the pounds, right? And she would literally tell me that she was trying to gain weight. So to be supportive of her decision, every time she would come to work, I would call her a huge fat ass, you know, to be supportive. I was like, hey, those chins are coming in nicely. And she'd be like, oh, you're such a sweetheart. 
On one hand, I don't know who needs to hear this tonight, but you don't need a condom. She's probably clean. You're going to have a great night. On the other hand, I don't know who needs to hear this, but use a condom. That bitch is dirty. But always remember that anything that isn't permanent is curable. And anything that is permanent is manageable. So have yourself a great time out there, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! <laughs> I come from a pro-choice family. As long as you make the right choice. Sure. Okay. But like my mom, though, she didn't find out she was pro-choice until she was pregnant with me about four months in. Four months in, fucking New Year's came around. She was like, holy shit, I could have aborted this motherfucker. That's right. <laughs> As a society, I think it's up to us to help the homeless get to a point in their lives where they're not in our way. <laughs> so the other day I was at McDonald's and I saw this single mother in front of me and you could tell that she was a single mom. You know, she was alone with her baby and she was digging through her purse for enough money to have a happy meal for her and her baby. But you can tell that she didn't have enough. I looked in her hand and she didn't have enough. And I really wanted to help that single mother out. So I mustered up the courage and then I walked over there and I looked her in the eyes and I looked at the baby in the stroller and I punched the baby to death. So now she can have a happy meal all by herself and she doesn't have to worry about being a single mother anymore. Boom! Too dark, gotcha. <laughs> That's right, we're having a good time tonight. I'm a firm believer in treating women as equal as men. So now whenever I hang out with the guys, I'm smacking their asses and squeezing their titties too. You know, to make it equal. When I was a boy, I took a handful of my mother's birth control pills, and at that time, nothing happened. But I didn't go through puberty until I was about 22 years old, so my wet dreams were like a tsunami. I was the only guy in high school with no pubes. Don't ask me how I checked. Now, my ex-girlfriend and I, we went to the fertility clinic the other day just to make sure that everything was all right down there. And the doctor told me some good news. The doctor told me that my sperm count is infinity. And that's like a Chuck Norris level of sperm count. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Y'all have a good night. Cheers. Love. When I first came into the building, I was asked, do I have a reservation? And I said, yes, Hank was... And that offended me, because I was growing on a farm. My white people grow Native Americans called a reservation. <laughs> Too dark, gotcha. <laughs> and long ago, I was told my heritage by a white man, and I found out that I am an East Indian from the West. <laughs> Once I had my spirits come to me, the ancestors of mine, they told me my indigenous name was Ermin. Ermin Eversick, as in Ermin Eversick. <laughs> One summer, I spent with my grandmother and she told me the name of my grandfather. She said that his name was Alvin Jackson. That summer, I learned a lot about living and a little about love. <laughs> my father was a construction worker. He was a hard-working man. He built everything and everything that he can, except for my self-esteem and my confidence. <laughs> My mom, when I was a teenager, she used to work with troubled youth at the healing center. And then she would come home to me every night, and then she would work with troubled youth. <laughs> my sister is the favorite of my mother's, because she was smart enough to become a doctor. She didn't become a doctor, but she was smart enough. <laughs> And my brother is the smartest fighter I know because he knows that he has two options. One, he can knock out any man with one punch. Or two, he can get me to do it for him. 
And I have a cousin as well. He loves to play Grand Theft Auto in real life, so all of your cars are gone. <laughs> and once I had a wife, we were in love. We went fishing, we went hunting, and we laid underneath the stars until her husband took her away from me. <laughs> and other than that, everything is going good. I have three children, and I'm a father, which is like a dream come true to me, because I've been a parent all of my life. I spent my childhood raising a single father. <laughs> all right, thanks guys. Thank you, everybody. Good night! <laughs> okay, so this is my first time trying out comedy. I am terrified right now. You guys look awesome. Give it up for Cody the Aviator. That was great. That was great. Give it up for the tough guy. It was cool. Tough guy, Chris. Chris? Greg. Greg. Sorry, I messed that up. So I actually wrote some notes on my hand, which really doesn't work out. You can see I smeared it all over myself. There's probably some mascara running right now. But anyways... My name is Darren Selkirk. I grew up yesterday. And, uh, but no, no, no. I, I grew up on a farm where white people grow Native American people. It's called a reservation. No, I'm just joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I grew up in a city called Selkirk, Manitoba, Woo! just down the street. Woo! Selkirk, yeah, a couple of fans of Selkirk, Manitoba. If you know Selkirk, Selkirk is like has the largest mental hospital in Manitoba and they let me out for the day so just, just to come do this just to come do this for you guys this is fucking awesome I have a great time Selkirk Manitoba also has like the best burger ever at Riverboat Restaurant shout out for the ultimate burger if you've ever been there it's fucking great go check it out if you're ever that way and also Selkirk Manitoba is the catfish capital of the world both kinds of catfish the kind that you fish out in the river and the kind that is like online right now messaging your teenage daughter at home under a different age. So, yeah. We got that going for us. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, oh yeah, before, before I came up on stage tonight, I actually called Netflix. I was like, 1-800-NETFLIX. I gave him a call. I was like, give me a special right now. And here's what they said to me. Here's what they said to me. If you're over 50, please press 1. So I don't, I don't know if they actually got the message yet, but I think it's in the process, it's in the works, it's going to happen. Right now we've got a YouTube special going on here. Hopefully we're going to be YouTube famous by the end of the night, which is like the most prestigious kind of famous that you can be right now in the world, apparently. But life's going pretty good. I uh, have three baby mothers. Obviously, look at me. You know what I mean? like, like, obviously, yeah, that guy has three baby mothers. Three different women have his babies. Yeah, that, that's what I would look... That's exactly what I look like. But anyways, I love them so much with all my heart. I actually have the world record for marriage proposals. I know that sounds fucking crazy, right? Like, I look like that guy. But, like, I have the world record for marriage proposals. I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to do it right now. I asked my baby mothers to marry me three times. 438 times so far. So, no, no, yeah, seriously, crazy guy. I told you they let me out of the mental for the day. So, like, <laughs> so I'm going to do it right now for uh, the 439th time. So check it out, check it out. Number 439, June 14th, 2022. Barbara and Roxanne, you're so beautiful, you're so gorgeous, you're the best mothers I've ever met. Thank you for having a baby with me. You're amazing. Baby mama superstars, will you marry me? You're all great people, you're wonderful people. I'm trying to look at each one of you in the eyes right now. I hope that you go far in this life, whatever your dream is, whatever you're doing with your life. You know what I mean? If you're catfishing, whatever, whatever you're doing. <laughs> just enjoy yourselves. Anyways, I wrote so many things down, and I just cannot seem to remember them, but I'm having a great time. I am going through my slut phase right now. Clearly I have uh, three baby mothers. Please don't slut shame. Please don't slut shame. It's not allowed. Like, I was on the bus on my way here on Winnipeg Transit. There was a guy jerking off. I wanted to join in, but, you know, I was sitting, I was sitting in the front. I was sitting in the front, and those seats meant for the handicapped people. And there was a woman next to me. She was pregnant, pushing the stroller. If I were to get up and unzip my pants, she would have stole my spot, so I didn't really Want to, I didn't want to risk that. I didn't want to risk that. But anyways, wherever you're going in life, thank you for listening to this crazy guy right here. I gotta go back to the Selkirk Mantle, and I will see you guys later. Thanks so much for listening. Have a great night. Have a great night. Cheers. Cheers.